everyone welcome back to my channel since it's still April and continue on with the Nancy Drew theme for this month well majority of it is going to be Nancy Drew as I mentioned in my previous video I'm going to try and do a few other ones that are in conjunction with this series for instance I will include a couple of Hardy Boys books at least the ones I have because I don't have the first four like I do for the Nancy Drew books Everything after the first four Nancy Drew books that I have is sort of a, you know, mix. Uh, depending on when I've been able to get these are a little harder to find than most others. But, you know, they, they seem to be, the originals seem to be coming back at least. And it's with the Hardy Boys and the Nancy Drew, the originals are a lot easier to find than some of the other older books. Because, you know, with the... Thanks to the revised text, they've still been as well known and as well enjoyed and well liked for by many generations and for many many years. Obviously, the Hardy Boys. Re I want to say they're going to be having their hundredth anniversary in a few years. I think it's that is correct. I think it was 1923 is when the first one was published, and so the boys are getting their hundredth anniversary in a few years. No, 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 no. It was 1927. So in about seven years from now, the Hardy Boys are going to get their hundredth anniversary. Ten years from now, Nancy's getting her hundredth. So yeah, we got some we got some big dates coming up here. This year, since it it is the 90th, which is the reason why I'm doing this, mostly Nancy Drew. Um, it's still a pretty big year for Nancy. A couple of years ago, we had the 90th for the Hardys. Obviously, since the Hardys were published before Nancy Drew. And it's still, um, I wouldn't say equally as big a hit of the Nan as Nancy Drew. Uh, it seems like Nancy seems to be a little bit more well known, or at least has a lot more for her, like in terms of, you know, merchandise and games and other stuff like that, more than just the books, if you will, than the Hardy Boys. Uh, Nancy's gotten her own a second series has gotten two more movies. Hardy Boys have only had a couple of attempts at movies and never really made it for some reason. Um, Disney did uh, two black and white movies for the Hardy Boys. Um, well, obviously they were black and white, and they were those were done in the fifties. You can find them in parts on YouTube. There's another one that was supposed to be the first episode in a TV series called Mystery of the Chinese Junk. Um, if you look it up, Hardy Boys Mystery of the Chinese Junk, and just take out all the vowels, you'll find it. Because that's how the person uploaded it, I guess, to make sure it stayed on YouTube for a while. And you will have to ramp up your volume. It's very low volume but if you ramp it all up all the way you can hear it pretty well just remember to turn it back down before you go to anything else or your ears will be blasted just you know giving you the warning right now anyways so yeah so that series obviously flopped even though that first episode was pretty well done my only complaint is they could have you know swapped the actress who did Frank and Joe simply because Frank is dark haired and Joe is blonde. They did do a cartoon series for the Hardy Boys following the same trend as Archie. So the Hardy Boys are a music band and they did the exact same thing here where they mix, they switch up the two boys basically. Joe is actually older and Frank is younger, and it's the only series that does this. And it kind of threw me off for a loop, and that's not the only thing that threw me off. I mean, the music was fine. Um, the boys can are allowed to sing, that's fine. And Sean Cassidy played as Joe Hardy in the 1970s TV series of 
Nancy, for Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. You know, and I have no problem with that. That wasn't the, the, the problem. The problem was the mystery is sort of like, what was it? 10, 15 minutes each? And one of them, and that was, okay, two episodes, I mean, two mysteries per episode with a song thrown in. And that, you know, and so it just kind of like, it really sped up the mystery. It's like, you know, quick, quick plot points and just, just move on to the next thing. Oh, they find it already. All this, you know, and it's, it, simply say it just didn't work out as well and I can see why it didn't last this long. Even though the music was, you know, pretty on, um, it was pretty good, you know. It had nice beats to it and everything, but the, the, the format just didn't work out as well. So, and then, like I said, we had the 1970s with both the Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys, and they ended up uh, meeting each other and solving mysteries together a few times. But. And then there was the 90s series that was done in Canada for both of them that aren't as well known. And that's kind of a reason why they're not as good as, you know, one might hope. Um, I mean, there are a couple of episodes that are just like, yeah, you know, these, these are pretty good. But for the most part, they're like, nah. no, 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 not really, not really. So, and now we had last year a movie for Nancy Drew, and then in October we got the CW Nancy Drew that everyone has been kind of divided on, and, and in some cases for good reason. Um, everyone's been like, you know, if this isn't your Nancy Drew, that's fine. But there, if there are obviously problems with it, you have to point it out. I mean, I understand that there are some people who are just like, I just don't like her, and you know, and I get that. But there are definitely critiques that need to be brought up as well. Not only is she not my Nancy, she no longer seems to be Nancy Drew. And then, and then, of course, there's all the plotting. I, I, there are some good episodes in that series. And I really wanted them to keep with those episodes. The problem, the thing is, is that they're bringing in the paranormal, and the paranormal just doesn't work in this. They're just trying to bring in something that, you know, never needed it. Because, like I said, the, the really good episodes where it just focuses it on her solving the mystery, they're good. They are really good and I'm like, this is Nancy Drew. I can tell this is Nancy Drew. You know, but the, the rest of the time it's just like, why is the ghost doing all the work for Nancy? She is obviously, she's supposed to be smart enough to be able to figure this out when we got the ghost leading her around. You know, I mean in the beginning she's like, you know, she starts doing stuff on her own and then it's almost like the ghost takes over and it's like that's not Nancy Drew if you need a ghost to help her solve a mystery okay that's kind of downplaying the reason why so many girls you know like myself growing up looked up to her okay she was out there she was smart she was resourceful, she, you know, she could do a lot of stuff that, you know, I mean, there are things that she's done that most people are like, oh, you know, you need a guy to do that, and she's here doing this, you know, kind of a thing. So for us, she's the feminist icon of this, the century now, because she's almost 100 years old. She's getting close. Um, and yet, this, with this, with the, I mean, yeah, the ghost is female, okay, but 
she still requires someone else to come in and help her do it. In the movies, yeah, she's got other people who help her. And yeah, it's okay to have your friends helping you. And, and you know, other people, because I mean, they do it in the series too. And I actually have no problem when Bess and George and, you know, Nick, Ned. I have no, no idea why they have a problem with calling him Ned. But, you know, when they come in and help her solve the mystery, you know, you, you gotta have a group. Alfred. But when she's doing stuff in her own and the, the ghost interferes, it just... It just doesn't work. With the Nancy Drew format, ghosts just don't work. Especially when you're making it a real ghost, okay? If you want to make, take one of these old female detectives and bring in some paranormal, there actually is a series that I have found where the group is called Haunted House Club I, well, or something to that effect. They are literally looking into paranormal activity. Again, like with the Nancy Drew series, it's not real, but there's only four books. Okay? If they really wanted to, they could take... I mean, there's a male series, too. The Doors, Force, and Perry Pierce. Okay, four books each. And they are interested in looking for ghosts. Okay, they are interested in the paranormal activity. Of course, like with the Nancy Drew series, it's all fake. But like I said, there's four books. Once you finish those four books, you can do whatever you want. You can bring in the paranormal because they're looking for it. You know? There are characters that, you know, have only like three or four books to their series. They're similar to Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. And you can do whatever you want with those characters, really, to be honest. I don't see why you really need to take something that has found a formula that's been tried and true for the past 90 years and then completely change it and say, oh, this works better. It doesn't. You know, Archie doesn't, has, has not, the, the Riverdale series from what I've heard, I, I'm not watching it because I did grow up with some of the Archie stuff. That's not Archie. Even though, yes, he does have to deal with weird, mis you know, bizarre mysteries, there are comics with that. He does meet aliens, he does meet ghosts. If anything, they should have done this with the Riverdale series instead of Nancy Drew. Just flip the two. I mean, th that's really what it should have been. Because Archie, it is canon in the comics that he meets ghosts, that he meets aliens. He gets abducted by aliens during a baseball, you know, practice, okay? And the whole entire baseball team gets abducted by aliens because they need to play baseball against some other aliens, you know, Space Jam kind of a thing. So, um, you know, Archie's done that. It's canon. It definitely is canon. Uh, Nancy, yes, there are a couple of, like, sets of ghost stories that she's solved. But even then, it doesn't work for all of them. You know? There's a few that you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this works. But even then, it's not exactly all. It, it's the same thing with the other, with the rest of the books, where it's fake sometimes. It's not real ghost. The Hardy Boys have done it, and I was like, there's only two of the short stories that I actually liked, because it actually was like, yeah, okay, this is fine. I kind of like this type of story. But the others are just like, that doesn't even make sense for a ghost story. I like ghost stories, okay? <laughs> I've read quite a few ghost stories, and it's like, even for a ghost story, it doesn't make sense, okay? It just, n just, I don't know, I'm sorry for ranting, but you know, this is a character, like I said, that I've 
grown up with, that I've looked up to, and to be basically told by the author, by the, the showrunners, okay, yeah, this is our Nancy, if you don't like it, get lost, you're not a real fan. That's not how you treat your fans. Okay, you want to know how you should treat your fans? You do what Sony did and redo the Sonic movie because this original Sonic design sucked big time. Okay? You need to listen to the fans and say, hey, we did grow up with these books. A lot of us have been writing fan fiction for these books. Get myself included, okay? Links down below if you're interested. Just to throw that out there. But, I ha we have, okay? Some of us have gone in and read these books over and over and over again and understand exactly what it is these characters have for their quirks. And, and the changes they made to Bess for the TV series is what really drags it down. So, I mean, when you're taking these characters and basically are in name only, because George doesn't even follow Nancy anymore. George always follows Nancy everywhere. She is the loyal best friend. Um, excuse me, I have to fix my hat. It's, it's falling on me. Um, but when they're basically nothing but in name only, why should I bother staying around and watch? If you're not going to keep my attention and keep the characters that I've known for years in character, it's not worth my time. And yeah, I know, I've just been ranting about it, and so it's taken some of, some of my time. But like I said, when you care about something, you want some kind of justice done for them, I guess you can say. Because, you know, other people like, this isn't right. You know, this isn't them. This isn't the character I grew up with. These aren't, aren't the characters I grew up with. It's George, like I said doesn't really follow Nancy anywhere in the series when she normally would in the books. She always has in the books. Bess is more frightened, but she likes food and boys, and then both of those was taken from her. She's not a pretty plump blonde anymore. That's been taken from her. So, um, you know, it's like, it just... It doesn't work. Oh, and Ned. Ned was the goody two shoes football player. The jock. He was always, you know, ready to back up Nancy. He's not that anymore. Okay. I was ex kind I was okay with Ned being played by a, you know an African American. I had no problem with that. But his backstory, come on, give me a break. Alright, you could get you just kept him. The good jock, the high school football player. You know? You could have. No, we had to give him a criminal backstory. Even though he was obviously justified in what he did. It's what they said. Um, so. It's just the whole. It's like, oh, he's gotta go to jail. It's like, come on. No. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. But he also had to tie in his story into the mystery at some point. It was just like, no, this is... You're trying to weave in way too much. And it's... This this just isn't going to fall... Is this just going to fall apart? And it's like, oh, we've already solved both mysteries. Who killed Lucy Sable? Who killed Tiffany Hudson? And there's six episodes left. And they're like, oh, what's all the supernatural now? What the mystery of the... Act like Clea? Who the heck came up with this name? Like seriously. 
I've read enough mythology and legends to know that is not a name that you can come up with. Okay? That's just absolutely ridiculous. Maybe a banshee. I mean, you, if you're coming from someplace like England, you'd use English names like a fairy or, you know, call it a banshee, call it a mermaid, call it a spirit. I don't know. The names they came up with was dumb. And, under, you know, it might sound like a great original name for something, but for, a, you know, not a spirit, really. That sounds like something you'd use, like, in a creature's name. And, like... In a fantasy world or something. Which is odd because I can still can't even remember how to pronounce it. Eclaclea? See? I can't. It's just ridiculous. I mean, when you've got something like Tolkien and Lewis coming around using regular old words like elves and dwarves and fawns and centaurs, you're like, this is ridiculous. You know? I understand you're trying to create something new, but just now. And I know I shouldn't be saying anything anything because I am not a screenwriter or a showrunner. But I have got an imagination and I read books. And I can tell you, and like I said, I read ghost stories and myths and legends and that's not exactly how you go about doing that. I'm sorry. So Anyways, I started off this video wanting to talk about the hidden staircase, and then I got into the, all the different adaptations for the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I guess this will just be that video then. I'll do. The hidden staircase in the next video. I guess we can do that. But anyways, yes. Each and every adaptation has its problems, obviously, and not each of them are going to be perfect, but um, when you have low expectations for a series and they just, you know, the series itself, itself seems to keep going lower and lower than those expectations when they were low already, then kind of says something about the show itself. I mean, like I said, there are a few episodes in this series that are actually really good, and I wanted it to stay that way, but I guess I can't ask or hope for too much with the CW, because everything's got to be dark and edgy. We're all basing this off on, on teenage, or, you know, on teenagers, and it's only aimed at people who are older than teenagers? If what I'm gathering is correct? Which means that we, they are promoting pedophilia? If you're sexualizing teenagers? At least tell me I'm not the only one thinking that's really utterly gross and disgusting and wrong. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways. Well. I better cut this video short. It's already gotten a little longer than I anticipated. Because I got into my whole rant. By the Nancy Drew TV series. From CW. But I will say. Hulu. Real quick. Hulu is wanting to do their own Hardy Boy show. And I hope. I hope. Hope they do it, do it well. I think they're already off on the wrong foot because, the, according to some of the sources I found, I don't even know how accurate this is though. I haven't found any other sources that said otherwise. So take it with a grain of salt if anything does change between now and then. But according to the sources I had found, the Hardys is two years apart, or there's a two year difference between the Hardys. And for those who have read the Hardy Boy series, I, well, 
I don't know how well you'd understand that, but as someone who's seen the difference between siblings who are a year apart and siblings who are two years apart, it, there is a big of a difference. There is a pretty big difference between the two. You don't, I mean, sure, Frank and Joe would still feel pretty close, but it's not the same as there being a year difference, because we're to the point of where they're almost like twins. Okay? The other thing is they're younger. Apparently they're supposed to be younger in this series. And there's some family drama going on. So it's like I hope they change it and if they don't that they at least write it well enough that it fits within their story. Because otherwise it's just going to be like the CW's Nancy Drew and it's like, okay, this is just a name only now. So, I mean, we'll see. And like I said, as I mentioned earlier, if they wanted to do something like this, there are actually other brother duos. Or, you know, brother detectives that I have found. But there's the Roger Baxter series where there is a two-year difference between the two boys, and you can tell, okay? It is, it is seriously, the, the, and they are younger. In this age, you know, um, in the ages that they're aiming for, the Hardy Boys series, in fact, you, you can tell. You can tell there is a difference between how Roger and his brother, oh gosh, I forgot his name now, between how Roger and his brother re um, talk and act around each other in comparison to Frank and Joe. You can tell. There is a definite difference. So, um, yeah, this... There are other stories, and I mean, heck, if they really wanted to, they could have taken any one of Nancy's, you know, international names. Nancy Drew is several different names. She, in France, she is Alice Roy. In the French version, she is Alice Roy. She's Kitty Drew, um, I think it was the Dutch version. In the German, she's named Suzanne Langen. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I don't think I am, though. Um, and there's, I think Impala Drew was another name that they've given her. And there's even the original names as well. There's Diana Dare, there's Kitty Dare, I think was one. Or Sue Dare, or, or Sue Strong, that was one. Sue Strong, there were just a bunch of other names they could have gone with. They didn't have to pick Nancy Drew for this series. And if it wasn't Nancy, called Nancy Drew, I think I've been able to stomach it a little better. Because like I said, there is some good writing in several of these episodes. Some really good writing. It's just for a Nancy Drew story, it doesn't work. At all. So... And there's a lot of options they could have gone with. They decided to pick Nancy Drew because instead of coming up with something original, they decided to, you know, try to sneak in on her success by hanging on to her coattails, basically. Instead of actually either sticking to a more regular Nancy Drew format like the movies tended to do, and the series, they were older series, mainly the 1970s, the 1990s, they couldn't watch much of that because it's like, okay, this is, this is getting a little weird. But, um, but even then, they're, those were a little closer to this format than what this Nancy Drew series is. So, yeah, they, they had other options. They just chose the Nancy Drew name because it's, the, you know, the typical, oh, you grew up with this? Let's take it and twist it into a different way that you won't recognize it now. Kind of thinking, and it's like, oh, this is for the younger audience to bring in new viewers, or, you know, to bring in new fans of the series. Like, but the, if you're bringing in new fans to the series, are they going to like your Nancy more than our Nancy? because they're used to this Nancy's working with ghosts and this Nancy is not. 
So there's there's like I said, there's a, a few problems with that type of thinking. Um, I mean, I can understand where like, oh, we want to bring in you know younger viewers, but it's like the games were one already doing that. Two, if you weren't reading the books because you liked the games, what makes you think anyone's gonna read the books after watching the series? There's a little difference in how th that works. I mean, not everyone's gonna pick up a book because you like the series. Especially when you start hearing from people, oh, it is different. There are no ghosts involved. So, you know. Anyways. I kept saying over and over, you know, well, I've already, I only said it once. But I kept thinking, you know, it's time to cut this short. And I went over again. I, again, I'm sorry, but I kind of needed to get that off my chest. And say, hey, you know, there are some good points. But there's just too many bad points. I mean, so I, like I said, I, I did watch this the series, the CW Nancy Drew series for a while until just recently and then this last episode I'm like, nope, I'm out. I can't take this anymore. She seriously has stopped being my Nancy Drew. I saw some of her in there but with the, uh, the direction that it sounds like they're taken it's not gonna work. Not for me. Definitely not for me. So, if you like it, good for you. I hope you just don't ignore the books, either. And if you haven't read the books yet, please do. And I hope you'll enjoy the heroine the rest of us have looked up to and have known for years. Especially as we near her 90th anniversary. So, thank you for watching this rant uh, that I didn't intend for it to become. But it did. And I hope you check out the rest of the Nancy Drew adaptations if you haven't already. And especially the books. So I hope you like them. And happy reading!